Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the San Francisco, San Francisco Directive and specifically to this offering of Spirit Co Friends Sangha Mindful Mondays. Glad to, to be here with all of you in, in all the different capacities that you that you are here. This evening, I wanted to explore Anicca. When I talked two weeks ago, I shared these five practices that the Buddha offered to help help one on their on their path quite broadly. Spiritual friends, sometimes is what we're doing here. But the first, the second was sila, ethics that we practice with. The third was a repetition of why speech, not if it's listed in sila, but the the impact of actually practicing wise speech. And the fourth practice that the Buddha offered was right effort or wise effort, which we might explore more in the future. And then the fifth, the fifth, the fifth is, in, and he said that if reflected upon, you know, if actually seen in our lives, the Nietzsche itself can lead to total and complete freedom. Yes. Hi, um, I'm wondering if we can um, maybe turn off the mic in the middle of the room because we're getting a repetition of some of your words. Thanks, Julie. Appreciate that, that information. So you can just notice how your experience is in you know, this modern life of having to navigate technology, right? And the responsibilities that we hold and how do you find like, oh, do I interrupt? Do I not interrupt? And that dance and it can be uncomfortable in the body. Right, and so our practice can be here for that too. Is it any different? Has it improved? Yes, wonderful. Problem solved? Fabulous. Great. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Thank you very much, Julie. Hmm. Impermanence. Everything's impermanent. Have you noticed? Everything is impermanent. And as we begin to bring our attention to that, being aware of, oh, 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 like just recognizing impermanence in the constantly unfolding nature of our lives, lives, just recognizing it. The Buddha said that just that is enough to lead us to full and complete liberation. So we're going to spend some time on it. And as we settle into practice, I'd like to invite you to bring Anicca, bring impermanence into mind as you're settling into stillness, whatever posture, sitting, standing, lying down, some variation, a tune, tuning our mind and body to this experience of Anicca. In a little while, I'll invite the bell and those of you who are here in the space with me at the Dharma Collective, you'll experience impermanence and the sound of the bell arising and then I'm passing the view, zooming in or watching the video later, you might notice some other sounds around you that are arising and passing because you won't hear the bell. And then you're, and then you're perhaps you have an experience in this stillness practice of resting into awareness of sounds arising and passing. We certainly practice with that a lot when I'm leading. So you can continue to explore for that just observing arising and passing of sound, or perhaps observing arising and passing of thoughts or emotions or some kind of bodily sensation. Sensation. I feel like a little itch is such a beautiful place to practice because we'll notice if we don't scratch the itch, It goes away on its own. Kind of magical. All conditioned experience arising and passing. Each breath arises and passes. So resting awareness of breath is a supportive practice for you. Simply noticing each breath, breath arising and passing. And often, 
we might receive instruction to choose an object of awareness and to rest into that or keep bringing our attention back to that or, or some practice like that. That can be super supportive. And this evening, I'd like to invite you to have your object of awareness be, be impermanence itself. Be, be, and so one of the ways that you'll experience that is to notice that you weren't really noticing it, right? That the attention was somewhere else, lost in thought, daydreamy, baby sleep. Or you just rest in awareness of something else. Great. And then there'll just be this remembering, oh, and that remembering, that's an indication of impermanent, impermanent. Oh, change. And so you can notice, oh, what does that feel like? To notice this change that just occurred. This change, it is evidence of anicca. And during this period of practice, I'd also like to invite you to bring attention into your posture occasionally, checking to see every once in a while that you are in an upright and supportive posture. Even if it's lying, lying down, that there's length and breadth in it, there's a regalness. Enough space for the full breath in the rib cage, in the low belly, in the diaphragm. Brown. A posture that helps the body to feel a sense of confidence and presence and ease. And as we check in with the posture occasionally, we'll also notice impermanence there because inevitably the posture will have changed in some way. We notice how it is. And if we're still alert and comfortable, great. Or if a small adjustment might be supportive, great. Discerning. Please enjoy your practice of noticing impermanence in each arising and path passing multiple of the next 30 minutes. Enjoy observing impermanence.
all conditions are impermanent. They arise and they pass away. Having arisen, they then must cease. Blissful it is when they subside.
all conditions are impermanent. They arise and they pass away. Having arisen, they cease. Blissful is it when they die.
Noticing how your posture has changed. Making no adjustments or making some supportive adjustments. And continuing to observe Anicca, to notice and recognize impermanence. Kind of in a broad way, or maybe more focused.
experiencing impermanence directly.
All conditions are impermanent. They arise and they fade away. Having arisen, they then must seek blissful within when they sigh. They reign this moment of change as we move from greater stillness and quiet into a little bit of movement, more words. Noticing if you can how the heart, mind, body responding to this current change. change. Is there a belief? Is there a resistance? Was there joy or annoyance? Frustration or yeah. equanimity? What's here? It's all good, right? Just wanting to know. Hmm. So hi again, welcome to the San Francisco Dharma Collective and specifically this offering of spiritual friend Sangha, Mindful Monday, I'm Augusta Hopkins and I'm glad to be here. I find there are so many ways to practice with anicca, practice with awareness of anicca, awareness of impermanence. Some of you know I had a bike accident just under two weeks ago. Great opportunity to practice with impermanence. <laughs> And then, and then some of your mom passed just over four months ago. Another really strong awareness of impermanence practice. And spending the month on retreat in February, I just, Anicca was, was such a, a clear teacher for me and such a beautiful presence. We had a lot of rain in the Bay Area in February, and there's a dry creek bed like most of the time just a dry creek bed that flows through spirit rock but because of the rain because of the conditions it was full of water the entire month and sometimes it was more there was so much water and so much sediment from higher up that it was like a caramel color but it kept changing of course it's changing because the water is flowing through and through and you can't step in the same river twice it was also changing and it, its volume was flowing like the river as the rains came and the rains subsided. And my grief was like that. And my healing of my shoulder, <laughs> the main injury that survives from the like accident is like that. And our, our lives are like that, like that, right? Our lives rise due to causes of the conditions and they pass away. I think that um, would you mind handing that to me? Thank you. What of the of the reflect on Anicca? Uh, I want to share. I want to share it in so many ways. I want to talk about it. So we'll see how it all goes. But one of them is, if you had a rope, for those of you who are here in the space. A plug for into the space. We'll get to play with the rope physically yourselves. But those who are are zooming in or watching later, you can find a rope later on, or take a pause and go find a rope and try it out yourself. Or you can just imagine it. 
but you have a rope and you're just pull, just pulling and just kind of allowing it to be, allowing it to change, allowing it to flow through. It's no big deal. My kind of pleasant with this rope in particular, I can feel the texture of it. It's kind of interesting. And then because my mind is so associative, I'm also remembering like the story behind these particular pieces of rope, but like that's not what we're talking about. And instead it's this constant flow of change. It's moving through my hands. That's fine. It's fine. It maybe it's even, it's even pleasant. But if I were to grab onto this rope and pull it, that is not so pleasant, right? Like that, that hurts. And that's what we do in our life, in our life so often. We want to grab a, grab a hold and be attached to this constant flow of change. Like, how could you not then suffer? Well, you don't have to grab it. Let go and you can just allow it to flow. We've dammed up so many rivers across the, across the globe. I think some of them had, you know, really good intentions, but if you look at the consequences of them, they're they're quite negative consequences as a result of the damming up net, but there's all this pressure and lives are lost. And like without getting to the complexities of it, there's a a stuckness that accumulates. And there's, and there's some stuff in my shoulder, and there's a lack of flow because there's this bracing. And that's just suffering. We don't need to create that for ourselves. If we can open to the change, the natural flow, we, we get a lot of freedom from suffering. So pass this around. You can check this out for yourself if you want, or just pass it to the next person if you don't want to play. And of course, we're constantly changing. If you look at an image of yourself and with our phones that all have cameras or mostly have cameras or lots of pictures of ourselves, like not the same person we were five minutes ago or an hour ago or a few days or a few years ago, like we're changing. And science tells us that every seven years, all the cells in our body have been replaced. Right? So we, we know in theory, we understand this truth that this body is changing. Yet we fight it, like we, we don't want to age you don't want another wrinkle or another gray hair to lose more hair or set or whatever the story is. But what if there was no change? That might be worse, right? There would be no existence of anything, least of all you and me. And we wouldn't like say somehow uh, a zygote was made as an egg and a sperm from cancer and an embryo formed. But that, but that, no, like no more change. It's because of this change that this body got to be into existence in the first place that an egg and a sperm could join and then to keep reproducing cells and then to come out of someone's body and then to keep growing. Like that's all because of change. Change is great. Change is what allows a bud to become a blossom. It's what allows a baby to become a child and an adult. It's what allows a seed to become a plant and maybe a tree. A tree. It's what allows a kernel of popcorn. Oh, excuse me, uh, I did that one backwards. A kernel of corn to become a piece of popcorn. It's everywhere, it's in everything. It's our constant companion anyway. What if we actually allow it to be our companion? Let it be there, know that it's there with us and value it and appreciate it. And it's because of change that we all were, all were able to gather this evening and then we'll all go our own ways and depart.
what seeds of change are in you now? Right? Something that's present or around the corner, or you know it's just occurred. Are you in it? Are you hoping for it? Are you resisting it? Are you sad about it? Are you glad it occurred? Okay. Have you ever had the experience of being in a bad mood or being sad or angry? some other unpleasant mental formation and recognizing, oh, this is a permanent. Having that recognition bring you some, some freedom from the present experience. Has anyone ever experienced something like that? It's, it's powerful and it's profound. And, and the more we do that, the more that awareness arises in the moment of discontent. It was very present for me when I had the bike accident. Accident, Like after the bike accident, someone came and picked my bike up and picked me up and was able to walk it off. And I just was aware, like, oh, this isn't permanent. And I'm okay. I crashed pretty hard and banged up in lots of places. And yet practice was there for me. It was so wonderful to not do any second arrow stuff. It was just like, yeah, okay, I got you. And then today, almost two weeks later, I was at physical therapy and the PT was doing a lot of manipulation on my shoulder helping to move to move things a bit. And it was not comfortable. But because there was awareness that it was impermanent and awareness that it was forward moving, there was no resistance to the discomfort. It was just like, this is uncomfortable. Was he okay? I'm like, yeah. And then he did something, was like, nope, that's not okay. Like the body's wisdom was there. They know that pain is not, that's not what we're not doing that. And he said, well, great. And I... I think there are a few things that have allowed this for me, but this practice is such a big piece of the Buddha Dharma Sangha broadly, not Anisha specifically, for me to trust that wisdom of my body and my heart and to be able to discern and recognize. That's okay, that's not okay. Hey. This is something to ride, or this is something to try to change or impact. So perhaps reflecting now or taking with you maybe the potentiality of a seed at the, the potency of a seed, whether it's a thought or a moment. I'm gonna pass these to Chris and ask you to pass them around and just see if looking at all of these seeds helps fire the power of change that that occurs because there's a seed there. The change is happening, but you have, to, you have to change a little bit to make that make sense. But there's so much in there, and the in there only comes out because of a Nietzsche. So just to see if it inspires anything in your mind. Thank you.
In the Marana Sati Sutta, in the compilations of teachings the Bhante Gunaratna assembled, I read it some months ago now, and I'll read it again. I don't know if I'll read it tonight, but you'll definitely, definitely be hearing. Mindfulness of death is what Marana Sati means. There's a lot of line reminding us of the, the impermanent nature of all things. Specifically, it's talking about life and death, because of death, my laws of death. And it says that life cannot last like a bubble, a dewdrop a line drawn in the water. This life continuum cannot last. It moves toward extinction, like the rising sun to its setting. And the words on the words on the Nietzsche bird are also collected into this offering from Bhagavad Gita. And it's lots of excerpts of things from the Buddha. Always love bubbles. And I've been particularly finding support in them in the full body, body knowing the child. And in the freedom of the wholesomeness of this thing, this and each of this change, and freedom from this, from the nature, the, the habit to think that it leads to dukkha. And what's, I mean, there's lots of things that are ephemeral, but bubbles are great, great ephemeral. Ah, there are blossoms. Do you see that? <laughs> I very carefully didn't open this before I left my home in case it leaked. And you'll notice you might take a precaution in one area or make a choice in one area and then there are unintended consequences, both beneficial and not beneficial. It's just how it is, it is right? That's why I get so caught, caught on it, trying to do it all right or do it well. And I don't even know if this is a good wand, you know? We'll see. Definitely dripping. I know they're a little far away from you, but what happens for you when you see the other one? Just you know. Mm -hmm. What a great example of change. I mean, you can play with these apps, so I'm not going to count them down. It would be too messy. I'm also observing how colorful they are. Seen so many colors in the bubble. And did you know that in the iPhone world, there's a new bubble emoji? Whatever, who knew? I found out the other day.
All conditions are permanent. They arise and they pass away. Having arisen, they then must cease. Blissful as was it when they had subsided. We did a little singing last week and I heard it. Lisa say, I got this bad badge. <laughs> it's funny. That is something that I enjoy sharing with you, given that I'm not a singer. But this evening, I wanted to enjoy the meta chant together. So I'll, so I'll once through again in Pali, and then we can do it line by line. And there's lots of different ways to translate it. You've heard my, the translation that I'm most, most familiar with. Adaptations. I offered it. I have a few different translations on this piece of paper, which I'll I'll give out as well. And I'm in conversation to get more details on the words of the poly. So more to come. But if you're interested, if you're willing, if you're able. The explore repeating after me. I'll go line by line for the four lines of the Anicca chant. Anicca Vata Sankara. Oh, really? <laughs> no, the play? Here we go. Anicca Vata Sankara. Thank you. Uparawaya Dameno. Uparawaya Dameno. Uparawaya Dameno. Upad. Sorry, the next line sounds somewhere in the beginning. Line number three. Upa jitawa niru janti. Upa jitawa niru janti. Upa jitawa niru janti. Upa jitawa niru janti. And then the fourth line, fine. Tetang wu pasamo suko. Tetang wu pasamo suko. And I'll chant it all the way through once more. It's fine to just flip and I understand that that's what's needed this evening. So I hope that it supports you. I'll probably chant a few times. So join in if you want, or plug your ears, or just listen. Can you have this around with This is how. <laughs> I don't have it for the Zoom folks. So, in the upper left hand corner is the is the poly. You'll see various forms of English. We'll look look at that a little bit more later. But and just kind of a loose translation, right? So that first word obviously is Anicca. Wata, I under I understand from Jaya, who was a monastic in the Ajahn Chah lineage for several years is her closest translation is just like alas right it's right and so it's like finally or it's coming to pass or I'm seeing this clearly alas I don't even know what alas means really right but okay fine alas sankara right sankara are conditioned experiences experiences things that arise it's a word that gets translated a few different ways to help us understand it in English but if you if you look at the 
five skaskanda, or you look at the Chachibhutana Sutta, the four establishments of mindfulness, you'll see Sankara as a formation or as an arising. It's the word in for mental, for mental formation in the Satsubhutana and in the five sound. So, but it has other permutations also for here. I think of this as like, oh, so I think it's arisen. Pravaya Damino, I'll give you more about that later. Upajitwa, declination of arising, and Nirudujanti, right? The cessation that Naroda or Nirvana is pointing to is cessation. Tasang Upasamo, again, more to come. And then Sukho is it, like, it's like Sukha. It's pleasant or happy or, or I think I like the word contented a lot for this. And Sukho is just declined to match Upasamo. And so if you're looking at Pali, there are some letters, letters that are used, this is all transliteration, obviously, that we're used to the pronunciation of in English is quite similar. C's, if there's a single C, it's often still a double C, a ch, a ch sound. And something that looks like a V is, in the tradition that I am practicing and offering from, is pronounced with a W sound. And then you'll see an M at the end of, end of a word, or dot underneath it, that's an, that's an N or an N sound. So really, with these few words that we're looking at, it's just the V symbol and the M symbol that are maybe not as your eye and ear are accustomed to having them come. So let's try it again. I'm, I'll am i do it line by line again. Also, I'll just do each line twice and join me for both times or the second time or not at all or whatever feels it. And like I said, listen or, or plug your ears or whatever works for you. Anicca Vata Sankara Anicca Vata Sankara Upparavaya Damino Upparavaya Damino Upajitava Nirujanti Upajitava Jitava Nirujanti Tetsang Upasamo Sukho Tetsang Upasamo Sukho Anichavata Sasangsara Anichavata Sankara Upadavaya Dameno Upadavaya Dameno Upajitava Nirujanti Upajitava Nirujanti Te sang wu pasamo suko. Te sang wu pasamo suko. Anichawata sankara. Anichawata sankara. Parawaya damino. U parawaya damino. U pa jitawa niru janti. Upa jitwa niru niru ji te sang wu pasamo suko te sang wu pasamo suko Noticing any residual impact in your body from the chanting, from the cessation of chanting. Impermanence of play in all that we do and all that we experience. Before we go on to a, a bit of a bit of an, an interaction, a few more bubbles. 
and then an offering off of the merit. Thank you for your kind attention. Like bubbles, a dew drop, a line drawn in the water. This life continuum cannot last. And neither can any moment. That one balance. Trying to get them a little further away from me, but not not a lot of success in that part. Last one, last one. Have I ever mentioned that I'm a grief type? See how the bell sounds with all this, all this goop in it. So anything that was beneficial for you from gathering together, may it nour nourish you. And anything that was not so beneficial or something that I did that was unskillful or harmful in some way, please let it go. And I apologize. And if you're feeling it, let me know. Any of the fruits of our practice that come from these little seeds, near the fruits of our practice, be a benefit to all beings, including ourselves, and bring peace and liberation for all. Thank you.